Hey there, good evening, how are you? Welcome to Plant-Based Cooking with Joshua. And guess what, my name is Joshua, so welcome this evening. It's our evening here, whenever you're watching it, I hope you're having a beautiful time in life. Um, and we're gonna dive into some really beautiful uh, staple of ours. It's a plant-based pasta, like a pasta primavera, which is, you know, fresh veggies. Um, and also we're gonna add some um, nutritional yeast at the end to give it that cheesy flavor and the extra protein and amino acids that our bodies need to stay strong and healthy as a plant-based diet connoisseur. So, um, just to kind of show you what's going on here in the kitchen, we've, we've got our Julian sun-dried tomatoes. If you don't like, I was going to say this too, if you don't like sun-dried tomatoes or you can't have tomatoes, no problem, you can omit this one. Um, you know, you can always add a bell pepper or something like that. Um, we, we like we like the kind of the, the, the sweet tanginess of a sun-dried tomato. We've tried sun-dried tomatoing ourselves or dehydrating them, and that's all. those are all great possibilities. If, if you're one that wants to do it yourself, um, highly recommend it. We buy the dry store-bought ones and then soak them with our own oil um, for about six to eight hours, we find is a good time, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so that is the only thing that really takes quite a bit of time if you're gonna do like the soaking sun-dried tomato method, or you can buy a trusted brand of sun-dried tomatoes that you like from the store. Um, hopefully it's organic or non-GMO, that kind of stuff as well. So. Um, again, that's the, the kind of thing that takes the most time um, if you're going to do it that way, uh, the old-fashioned way, if you will. Um, otherwise, we're going to be, we have a staple in, in Italian cooking, right? We have some garlic. Um, I want to notice this too. I smashed the garlic cloves about 15 minutes ago. They say uh, in the world of, of cooking and nutrition that when you smash the garlic clove and you let it kind of aerate, it's kind of like a lot of foods are like this where you kind of damage it and then it actually re releases more nutrition nutritional values, so that's kind of the thing, you, you crush it, and then we peel the skins, uh, we'll get going on that a little bit later, just want to introduce all the ingredients here first. So we have the, the garlic, all organic garlic that we buy, mostly from the local farmer's market when we can, um, and then a, a beautiful white onion, you can add more than that if you want, we like to do one white onion, a um, little bit of celery, and we're going to go with a purple carrot, and an orange carrot, and some broccoli tonight, sometimes we'll do asparagus, you know, whatever's, again, at, at the market that week or what we're feeling that week. So um, you can always play with any of these vegetables, the primavera, whatever is in fresh, you know, it's the spring. So whatever's fresh and local to you is always best. So these ingredients all might change, except for maybe the garlic and the onion. Um, and then, of course, for our uh, seasoning, we have the classic um, Italian spice. So that's a mixed spice of rosemary, oregano, and all those other beautiful herbs. Um, in there, some, some beautiful essence, uh, herbs in there. We're gonna add some black pepper as well, and maybe a pinch of salt, especially while we do our, our noodles, um, and then nutritional yeast, so that's the good the good golden stuff there. And then a pasta, we do, um, you know, we, we're, we're okay with gluten as far as gluten goes, so any, you know, we like to buy from, um, you know, an organic trusted source, so a lot of Italian products are really high quality, of course, that's where, you know, pasta originated from, so we like to buy organic pastas from Italy. We do. Uh, change we we try you know the lentil pasta you know if you're if you're trying to go gluten free uh, or maybe more protein into your into your um, diet than than you know going with gluten pasta or the chickpea pastas there's many different uh, types of pastas out there so there's rice as well we we used to almost always use just rice pasta for a little while there and then we just kind of started changing it up so whatever you're feeling um, and we're using the little spirals today so you can use a penne or a spiral works really good for this type of, of pasta primavera we find but whatever noodle again that you you are uh, you know happy to go with and, and you love um, go with it so I'm gonna start the uh, water first so it's just gonna fill up my water again we have our <coughs> osmosis water here um, hopefully the water that you use is trusted this is the best that we can do at this point in time we do aspire to have a better system, more spring bait, spring water kind of energy. Um, I'll do about three pinches of salt. They say when you're cooking pasta, especially you want to have this, the, maybe four, um, you want to have your, your water like the sea, like the ocean, right? So um, that's kind of a rule of thumb that from a lot of the, you know, the Italian chefs that I used to work with and, and learn from, uh, that was kind of the big thing is that you want, you want to have really salty water when you cook your noodles. Um, so that means that you don't have to really add salt later in the meal or in other vegetables. So just kind of notice that. And also, um, another trick is sometimes people, you know, the package often says to boil the water and then add the noodles and let them all go together. Uh, a little trick I've picked up again along the way from the geniuses that I've learned from and all the 
shoulders that I'm standing on in the culinary world. Um, you add the noodles in with the water just so that they're a little bit above, uh, the water line is a little bit above the noodles, so not too high. So that way you can kind of get a better idea of how much water you need. And then we'll go put it over on the stove here and my beautiful wife and camera assistant is going to follow me over here. Thank you so much, Lemmy. You're amazing. Uh, we fortunately, in this particular house, we have a um, power boil option, so that, that gets it going real good. Um, and then I put a lid on just a little bit on the side. I don't cook it all the way, but just to get the heat going, try to save some energy, um, I try to, try to just put a little bit of lid and just stir it up just a little bit um, as you go, too, because you don't want them to stick to the bottom. So everybody help remind me to stir that as we go. All right, so back over this way. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to do the onions, the celery, and uh, the carrots first. So again, remember when you cut, you want to have your hand grabbing the food, whatever you're doing, and then protecting your fingertips with your knuckles, right? So that your fingertips are never going to be in contact with the blade. So that that's that nice protection there. Um, grabbing the onion or whatever you're grabbing with and then bending your fingertips back is always helpful. It took me a couple times of cutting my fingers to really appreciate <laughs> this technique and safety. So just passing that along is that uh, before you, you dig into your, especially with onions, that slippery outer skin, sometimes that's where I've actually cut most uh, myself mostly, I think, is with onions and that slippery outer skin. So just, uh, you know, be aware of that and then always, uh, you know, have a nice sharp knife blade that helps with uh, your shoulder and the wear and tear in your body and also the ease of cutting and then it's a little less um, of slippery, if you will. So again, having your fingers back. Good. So the onions are going to set right there. I'm going to open my garlic up a little bit after I smashed it again. It's been setting for about 15 minutes. Stir the pasta. Thank you. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I have found that the rice noodles don't actually do well with this technique. I just want to put that out there. Follow the rice noodle or other noodle recipe. The, what, the technique of filling the water um, and then putting the noodles in has really, from a traditional Italian viewpoint of using uh, wheat-based pastas. So uh, I have tried it with the lentil-based pastas and the chickpea-based pastas, and it was very mushy. So. Um, you want to follow the directions on those boxes because those are specific. I uh, just want to put that out there. Trash away here. Good. Sorry. Wash your hands. Good. Okay. Um, now you can slice and dice the garlic. I like to kind of give it a little extra smash. So I've got my little garlic press. Press the garlic in there. Watch your fingers. Slap, slice the end off. Check the inside, make sure there's no extra goodies that are hiding from you. Good. And then extra little squeeze, get the last little bit of goodness out of there. Good. And you can take the inside out. Waste not, want not. Take that out. And you can chop that little end up at the very end. Good. So I keep my garlic kind of off to the side for my onion, just because I don't want to burn the garlic when I do this next technique. So I'm going to get the the onions and the celery in here, or excuse me, the carrots and the celery in here next. These are skinny onions, so this is a good size. I said an onion. I'm skinny carrot, thank you. <laughs> I'm smelling the onion. The onion's in my nose, so I'm trying to like focus. But uh, this is a skinny carrot, and this is a good a good size. So I would just both of them are about that size. So I just again protect the fingers. Um, really, you know, nice, uh, you know, as, as thin as you can go. The thinner the they are, the quicker they'll, they'll cook and do what you, you like to do. Um, the orange one's actually a little bit bigger than I like, so I'm going to just save that off to the side and then cut that in half and then do the rest. And it's also nice to get different colored carrots just for, you know, the aesthetic visual of, of the pasta. So I'll take this carrot, it is just a little bit bigger, and then cut it in half and then continue. Good. Okay. So we usually would have music going, just wanted to say this, we usually have music going during our times when we're cooking and stuff in, in the kitchen, but because of all the beautiful uh, copyright laws, which I'm, I'm all for about paying the artist, um, we're just listening to the sounds of the chopping. Uh, so anyway, 
we're at, we are music fans and we have our own music on the conscious groove.com little selfish plug there. Um, but that's all good. And we also have a YouTube video. <laughs> but, and then again, kind of chopping the celery, I cut the big stalks in half and then same thing about similar size, maybe a little bit bigger than the carrots because the celery cook quicker than carrots do. So a little bit chunkier with the carrots. You can go slicing sideways, diagonal, however you want to do it. Just doing it pretty simple today. Um, just straightforward, straight, simple kind of kind of an ideas. Good. So now that this is kind of the, the mirepoix, as they say, in, in culinary world, um, this is the, the celery, excuse me, celery, carrots, and the onions, and then the garlic will be off to the side. So we're going to walk over. Actually, oops, I forgot to heat my pan. That's okay. It'll work. I should, have, I should have started heating my cast iron pan about three to five minutes ago, but I'm going to speed up the process here. That's okay. We're all good. So I did want to talk about the oil. Um, we don't, we, we try to consume um, the right amount of oil, I'll say. Not, not too much. I used to be kind of an olive oil fanatic and love it and have it with almost every meal. And then things happening with the heart and the circulation and realize that, you know, fat is fat is fat, especially saturated fat. So we try to work with oils um, very little and very minimal. So I don't put oil in my skillet when I do my mirepoix. I let the onion uh, and the celery and the carrot all kind of sweat it out and that moisture helps it cook. So even with the sun-dried tomatoes soaking in oil, I'll drain some of that out and save it for another round and you know use it maybe some salad dressing or something later on. But, um, and then it's seasoned the flavor a little bit nice. But we, we do like to have a, you know, a little bit of oil with the pasta because it's gonna be an oil-based pasta or a, um, a, not a red sauce based pasta. I should have said that in the very beginning. Um, so this is just how we can, you know, to your flavor, to your health liking, to your, every, all those con considerations that you have for your health. Um, I'm just sharing how we kind of backed off the olive oil um, consumption over the last couple of years and have felt a, a, a decent change in heart and circulation. So why no it. canola oil? Ah, well, canola oil is a whole world of, um, Yes, it has no like fat and all that kind of stuff, but it's really, it's, it's from a plant called rapeseed. Um, and I forget its Latin name right now, but it's, it's called rapeseed and it's known as rapeseed. And some companies actually call it rapeseed to try to hide from the fact that Canada kind of manufactured way too much of it in the eighties and sold a bunch of it anyway. So, you know, they, the, the whole original intention of canola oil was for gun and machine gun lubricants. So for artillery, right? So anyway, um, to my, the best of my knowledge and researching this extensively, especially like 10, 15 years ago, I was really into what, what is canola oil. Um, it, it's something that we don't use. I try not to buy, um, you know, if we go out, it's, you know, kind of those things you can't ask your chefs, but, but if you go out, chances are people are cooking with canola oil because it's cheap because of its health benefits and it doesn't flavor the food, right? So, um, it technically originally started as a machine gun lubricant and then Canada, supposedly got the FDA and the USDA to approve it as a food and then here we are 30 years later and it's been pushed like crazy so like a lot of like a lot of other things that are pushed you have to ask why it's being pushed so much um, so anyway that's the thing with canola oil we like to use cold pressed first cold pressed olive oils um, uh, avocado oil grapeseed oil coconut oil. Coconut oil has, has a higher fat, saturated fat concentration, so we, we use less of that these days, but I, in cooking, I'll use coconut oil. Okay, so I feel like, yep, my pan's getting to that point of... Noodle tested. stirring. Thank you, noodle stirring reminder. Yep, good. It starts to foam up here. Show the show this side now that we're transitioning over here. Cool, thank you, Lemia. She's amazing. She's the best. I don't know what I would do without a beautiful wife, Lemia. Yay. I want to also check it out. Let's see. Yeah, it's getting there. All right. So now that that's getting, getting warm enough, I'm going to chop in. And you can chop the, or excuse me, you can throw the onions in smaller than this. We put, it, we put them in a little chunky just because they do cook down while we do this process. So, oops, jumping onions. The onions, carrots, and the celery go first, and I'll add my garlic just in a little bit. So good. 
good. Again, this is dry, dry um, sauteing, so it's it's just really using. You can kind of hear the moisture of the of the uh, onions coming out and all the you know the celery, but really the onions start to to talk and get it going. And make sure that you're be careful. Uh, don't do what I do. Don't grab hot food from hot pan. I've really you know thick hands, if you will, when it comes to heat. Just from working in the kitchen, but just always be careful with hot stove top things. Just wanted to say that. Good. So stirring that up, it's going good. We have again this power boil setting, so I'm just going to back it down a little bit. Uh, usually, most pastas, traditional pastas, are about uh, you know nine to ten minutes, eleven minutes. Ten to ten minutes is like al dente. Eleven minutes is like really good. So, um, well, it looks like we're at boiling point. So with this technique, once you get it to boiling point, then you can kind of cut it. Uh, and just check it every like three to five minutes because it's a different technique than putting the water in, letting it come to boil, and then adding the pasta. So check it a little bit sooner than what the package recommends if you're using this te if technique. If you're using a package technique, just follow the recipe in general. For their cooking instructions, I should say. Good, and you're gonna start to see a little bit of um, browning on the onions and all the good stuff. So just a little bit of caramelizing and kind of a fast Fast little heat up. <clears throat> and then while we're waiting for these guys to go, I just want to show you a technique here with using or cutting the broccoli. Good. So the broccoli, I like the stalks. A lot of people just use the heads, but this is where a lot of the fiber is, right? So, you know, we get a lot of, as plant based, we like to eat our fibers. So I like to cut them down the center and they come in these little, like, um, they're not wedges, but they get, they're get they just little slices, I guess. You'll see what I mean here. So kind of just go down. Again, watch your fingers. Go down and just slice maybe one one round a couple times. And then you get this kind of like noodly, broccolini kind of looking guy. But it's just broccoli with the longer stalk and just cut the stalks cut thin, right? So again, just go around and just kind of works works out as you work around the the main stock that you just take these little little tiny sliced chunks out of it and it actually is a really good um, just adds a cool little texture too to the posture so good again watch your fingers here towards the end nice and slow when it gets to the really really end you can take it down maybe one more time maybe slice it in half right there good so it just looks like these little little flying wedges of broccoli Okay, so now I hear my, my, my uh, onions are going pretty good. So now I'm going to add my garlic. These friends look like they get nice and brown. And you can see that you know there's plenty of moisture. I hope you can see that there's plenty of moisture in the pot or in the pan. Um, and that's all just from the, the vegetables sweating out the, the water inside, right? So good. So now at this point, you got a little bit of... A little bit of browning on the onions. Good. And we love to use the cast iron type pots just to get that extra iron in the diet. And then I'll throw my garlic onto the mix. Good. A couple more I missed. Good. And then back down the heat just a little bit. Again, I don't want to. I don't like to burn the garlic, so bring it down just a little bit. I had it at medium cooking that whole time, so I kind of heated it up on high and then backed it down to medium while I sautéed. And then now I'm cutting it back again about halfway between low and medium. So this is. You know, I like to not fry the garlic just to get that seasoning in, all that good stuff. Good. Let's not forget about our noodles. Yeah, stir, stir. I'm gonna check one out. We'll, we'll grab one of these friends out and check it. Feels like about three more minutes on that one. Hmm. Good. Go back to our broccoli. Thank you, Lemio. Just going to, and then once the the veggies feel like they're good and the garlic's in there, then I'll just throw this, this broccoli in on top with the sun-dried tomatoes and back the heat down a lot. 
Uh, we used olive oil in, in cooking the, or in, um, in marinating the uh, sun-dried tomatoes, or the tomatoes. So what you want to do is not cook at high temperatures with, it's a double, it's a double, on, no, double negative thing, but you want to not, <laughs> it's best to cook, uh, to not have olive oil heated up above about 300, 275 degrees. So in general, we're getting above that with cooking. So olive oil is not recommended to cook with unless it's been heat pressed, but even then there's a lot of uh, controversy about that. The high temperature cooking oils are olive or um, coconut and avocado and grapeseed. So any of those will be fine if you want to do that. But we like the olive oil flavor. And again, I don't, I won't cook this at the very end. So I'll put the broccoli in for a moment, and then I'll put the sun-dried tomatoes in at the very, very end, just to kind of again give it that taste and heat those guys up. Okay, so now there's a good bunch of garlic or a good bunch of broccoli there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to throw this in on top of my sautéed friends. Good. There's a little bit of water that's going down there. That's good. A little bit of moisture in there. Good. Extra goodies. Cool. And then we'll just work this in here a little bit. Get another spatula here. Smells mm -hmm. so good. Uh -huh. Oops, jumping broccoli. Jumping broccolis. Good, yeah. Turn it down all the way to low now that you can feel like the garlic and the Onions are really smelling delicious. And then now the heat of that will help the broccoli kind of give itself a little steam. And again, you don't want to cook things too long. We've talked about this in different videos, but you don't want to cook things too long. So, you know, with the, with the mirepoix or doing the, the onions and the, the carrots and the celery, we, uh, we go a little extreme on the heat. But then when it comes to the big stuff, the broccoli or the asparagus, something like that, we'll just kind of let the, the heat of the meal do its thing. Let me steal that broccoli back. Good. And then, if you want, you can put a little lid on the top just to kind of let that steam help cook the broccoli just a touch more. And then, let's see. Let's see how these noodles are looking. Looking good. Looking movable. They're warm. <laughs> yeah, feels like these are good. Let's see? Feeling good, feeling good. Okay. Get our colander out here. Good. Good. Okay. So I'm just placing my steps here. I've got to get a Oh, hot pads. Good, nice. Soft, yummy. This is the time that we get the steam bath facial in the kitchen. Watch out for steam burns and all that heat, right? And I don't like to rinse my noodles either. That's kind of a thing that people can do. Some people like to do it to stop the, you know, shock the noodles. I'll put cold water on there. Um, these were a little bit al dente as far as the finish that I just tasted, so I'm not going to put any cold water on them or rinse them at all. Um, again, we're okay with gluten, and there's just a little bit of extra starches when you don't do that. But um, again, follow if you're doing another recipe or using another uh, type of noodle, just again, follow those directions because every one is different. And they all act differently and require different, different techniques. Cool. All right, so this is beautiful pasta that now... I'm going to add a little bit, for this part, just a little bit of nutritional yeast. What is nutritional yeast? So nutritional yeast is a little bit of like, um, it's kind of the last process of, of the yeast, like that you get brewer's yeast from and um, different types of yeast like that. So what it does is it acts, um, it kind of goes through this process where it gives it this cheese flavor. In anything you use, it gives it a cheese flavor or a sour kind of a flavor, but it gives you uh, 
vitamins, B vitamins especially, B6 and B12 I believe, and tons of other vitamins. Um, the body needs nine amino acids, and it's about two grams of protein per tablespoon. So and it's, they have all nine. Yeah, and they have all nine essential amino acids. Excuse me. So, let me just take this. Good stuff. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, good stuff. It's one and of our then, sources of protein besides yeah. the broccoli and yeah. the vegetables. So again, I, I we choose to go a little light on the oils these days. So, I'm going to drain most of this oil out. Yeah, there's maybe, you know, maybe hanging out there, there's just a little bit, you know, on the bottom. That, that's okay. We do, you know, we do want to help out the noodles here. So I'm going to put this actually directly on the noodles and not on the pan. I kind of switched my, my what I told you all earlier. So I'm just going to dump that in there. <laughs> yeah, so Chef choice. Chef choice. So I thought, I'll just throw it over the noodles and get the noodles. So what this helps the noodles do is get that little bit of oil coating on there and do that. So... And it heats up the sun-dried tomatoes because they don't need much help getting warm. Again, that olive oil and stuff. Good. All right, check our friends over here. Broccoli's look amazing. Wonderful. Mm. Good. Cool. All right. And like, okay, let's grab a little. Actually, hold on. Let's do a little bit of seasoning in the noodles just on their own. What you got there? So we got the Italian spice I was talking about. Just our little uh, local market has by the bulk uh, Italian seasoning. So there's one, two, maybe almost three. <laughs> Good. And then whole peppercorns. I love fresh cracked peppers and the freshness of the oil and vitality of it and maybe there's some satisfaction with doing this motion. I don't know. Maybe it's like a kind of like sawing addiction. and making <laughs> and like hammering and nails. I don't know. He has an addiction to pepper <laughs> grinders. I thought we actually need to go get more black pepper. <laughs> we got just, this is the, our last little bit. So guess where we're going. All right. So then there, just kind of mix that in just a touch. We're going to do a big mix in a minute, but just get that, what you just added in there, on there. Good, beautiful. Good. Look at that. Beautiful. Clean pan, no oil needed. Wonderful little sauce. Cool. And then we're going to just mix everybody up. point I'm gonna, it smells like it needs a little bit more nutritional yeast, not a whole lot. You can always add this afterwards, but just a little baseline, oops, kind of cheese flavor. Two so, tablespoons gives you all the protein you need. Yeah. For a little while. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, think of, think of, uh, you know, the, the process of life and Plants and trees were all here before, whichever, whatever you think, however you think the world, however you think you got here, there were plants and trees before all of us got here, and all the other plants, and all, or all the other animals, rather, so it's kind of saying to me, like, hey, the plants have been here for a while, they have a lot to offer, and they can sustain so much life. And we are intelligent beings that have choice, and we have compassion, and we have empathy, so it is our duty choose kindness and for us especially in the last three years or so it's been plant-based lifestyle and you know, choosing products that are not made with animals or byproducts of animals and just doing that whole thing because it's you know it's one thing to be in the kitchen doing this and it's another thing to be out there in the world and you know voting with your money so just like voting with organic food you're, you're voting when you buy products that support you know animal safety or animal harm right so anyway this is our, our meal. It's done now, so I think it's been, I don't know, about 30 minutes or so, give or take. Um, so it's a pretty quick meal when it comes down to it, and it gets better as it sets. So uh, we'll, we'll let this set here for about a, you know, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes, and then 
come back and give a little little warm up. Um, but you can serve it up just as is. It's delicious. Uh, so it, it also just allows when you give it that time, uh, just to the spices to open up a little bit more without high heat on them. Um, so that's kind of a thing. I like to add the spices towards the end and let it soak and saturate all together, as opposed to you know cooking them and getting them really hot. So um, yeah, and I. I'm definitely going to add more nutritional yeast onto mine uh, <laughs> when we dish it up, and then we will add maybe a little bit here and there. But um, I'm a huge nutritional yeast fan. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's changed our lives. So it's it's a golden golden ticket. It's the golden you know the Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. You know this is <laughs> this is the vegans' golden ticket is nutritional yeast. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing, and I, we appreciate you for supporting us in 2022. Well, if you're watching this anytime, but this is right before 2022. Um, it's December 30th in 2021, and we're just going to wish everybody a beautiful and safe New Year's celebration. And wherever you go, whatever you do, just be kind, compassionate, and caring to yourself and others. And just may all the beauty that this world has to offer shine in your life. And may you give and share and receive equally and freely. And yes, we're just so grateful. If you ever want to check out any of our music, you can go to Rama Holistic Care has our music, uh, has essential oils has uh, our aromatherapy uh, has our aromatherapy of course but we do massages Lemmy is a doula we do weddings so we travel we, we're based in Southern California work primarily with dogs. we work with dogs we are dog massage therapists human human massage therapists we just love life we love sharing with people the things that we've learned and, and you know if we can help somebody feel better in this life on any level that we've learned about we're grateful to share um, and anything anything um, you know comments are always welcome on here and can get a hold of us through those websites from a holistic care. All right. Much love. Everybody have a beautiful night and manja. <laughs>